magnetic field pole shift could threaten civilization. You know, my friend was laughing at some of the language that the author used, you know, threat to the earth or things of that nature, earth destruction. And I want to get terms and definition out of the way, first and foremost. Human beings think about the idea of their world shifting, literally, as the end of the world and the earth's destruction. And I view this to be a sumptuous and um, egocentric about it revolving around human beings. And I think a lot of people understand that and might even agree. So the thing to understand is, these things have been happening, and there's a lot more people talking about these things in recent years. I know that I've been talking about the magnetic field shift for at least 10 years, and we saw reports about airports realigning their runways because of the changes to magnetic north. And it's moving, as they've been saying for years in many of these reports, at a rate of 40 miles per year towards Siberia. And as a result, we're seeing more reports at the same time, while most people assume it's just a conspiracy, reports about dead fish, reports of dead birds and other animals ending up in areas where they're not normal. Now, we add that, of course, with military sonar, that complicates a problem that perhaps in normal situations, those animals, those birds, those fish, those whales uh, would survive. Something's going on, and it is tied to changes in the planet's climate, but yet because they politicized climate change and they've made it about fossil fuels, there's a lot of defensiveness with regarding discussing changes in our climate that not so much are caused by mankind, but are caused by the sun. There are periods in which there's less solar activity, by the way, and that's when we receive more of that cosmic radiation when with less solar flares, you have a weakening Earth's magnetic field. And that was the title of my 2009 article. Solar maximum and the Earth's weakening magnetic field. And so since that time, and even a few years before that, but there's just been a critical mass that our world as we know it is changing and various things are linked together that when they write these articles, they don't necessarily do their homework. The Earth's core, the magnetic, magnetic field of the Earth, the Sun itself, changes going on with the Sun, asteroid threats or periods in which they're predicting more potential close passerby events involving asteroids, like one in 2020. And again, that's during solar minimum. And these are periods in which the magnetic field around our planet is weaker. The thing is, there's just so much more connected with this than just what meets the eye. And I didn't even get into earthquakes and how, you know, some of the, the risk areas, the 2020s is the period in which we're going to see, I believe, a lot of activity as the next, next solar cycle kicks off, and if it's a large solar cycle, those areas, right, in which it's overdue, those tectonic plates, through a variety of means, and Mitch Batros, who wrote a book called Solar Rain, gets specific in how earthquakes, solar flares, geomagnetic storms, tectonic activity are all linked together, as well as other strange phenomena like lightning storms or thundering, thunderstorms. Of course, there are websites that have been discussing this more so in the last several of years. So this is not something that's some sort of an unproven or untested theory. As we see these changes, though, to magnetic field comes the changes in uh, livability in certain areas, as they're talking about. At the same thing, at the same time, they're talking about changes to the magnetic field of other planets, entire planets like Mars, in which futurists are envisioning future civilization on some of these planets that are uh, potentially going to be capable at some point of sustaining human life. So there's something even bigger relating to all this and the rise and fall of civilizations on a much larger level. And it does seem that we're at the tail end of a, uh, of a cycle. 
And it's, this could even extend out another 100 years even. You know, just the incremental effects of the thinning of the medic field, the, the incremental pole shift, and the subsequent events and shifts and change-ups to the society, including at some point the grid sustaining some sort of strike from the sun. Totally natural. And I see all this as totally natural. You know, they talk about, you know, the earth trying to, like, move out of its current position and flip, but then almost being forced back down. I really wonder what's really going on in this reality to begin with. That there would be that type of, you know, it's almost as if the earth is trying to free itself from being under some sort of grid control. And we're here, you know, like ants, talking about these things, acting like they aren't connected, Yet we have all this knowledge, yet we also live in this world where we see where people's focuses are with their video games, their smartphones, and their television shows. And see, that's a big issue. That's a big deal. Because if they're not able to see the sun alone, then how can they see how the sun connects in with the changes in the magnetic field, with the Earth's core, with what's going on on other planets, how the sun and it relates to even spiritual parasites, or that which some call aliens, or those things that are going in and out of the sun that have been filmed by SOHO satellites that show objects gathering their energy from the sun. If they're not able, if people aren't able on a fundamental basic level see the human trends with the war cycles, how can they understand the larger cycle of mankind, the rise and fall of civilizations, and how it relates to where we are right now? So I think that in my lifetime, we're going to see a lot. I think in my lifetime, this area is going to see a lot. 